Hey all, welcome back and a belated happy Thanksgiving to all my US friends down there who celebrated it. Now, Thanksgiving is to me just the beginning of the end of the year. Just family and food and just, just a lot of fun. Um, so um, Annie's Smoking Pot is actually doing a collaboration for Thanksgiving leftovers. And I'm going to be talking about dinner rolls. We all love our balls of bread to dip in all sorts of stuff. Be it Thanksgiving or Christmas, this year, next year, that's gonna be evergreen. So let's see what you can do if you have dinner rolls that happen to be leftovers. Now this is my favorite recipe for dinner rolls. And you can actually use this recipe to make bread, like loaves of bread and burger buns as well. Different shapes for the same recipe, basically. And you can make it for Christmas this year. It'll be a great fun. The ingredient set is pretty basic. I am using buttermilk though, and that's gonna add a cool layer of creaminess and just infuse the bread itself with that buttery, almost sour flavor from the buttermilk. So first you want to measure your flour, salt, sugar, and the yeast in your bowl. Now I'm using my KitchenAid mixer. So I'm gonna just measure everything in there. It just makes kneading so much more easier. For the flour, I'm using bread flour. There is a small difference between bread flour and regular all-purpose flour, and the extra protein basically helps with the development of gluten way more. And the sugar here plays a key role in giving the yeast the food that it needs to basically fart out carbon dioxide. Once you have everything in there, give it a quick mix. Then you need about 60 grams of butter that I've already measured here. Make sure that it is room temperature. Then you want 340 grams or mils of buttermilk or whole milk, and then one whole egg. And just dump it all in that one bowl with the flour from earlier, and then attach it to your KitchenAid mixer. Now you wanna use the paddle attachment and just start mixing everything together at the lowest speed possible until the dough comes together. And we need some more help to then further knead this. So let's take it all out from the paddle and we'll switch the attachment to the dough hook now. And then again, lock it and low speed. Now you want to continue to mix this until the dough has really just cleared all sides of that bowl. And the dough at the end should be soft and supple and not be sticky at all to touch. It should roughly take you between five to eight minutes to get to that consistency. If the dough appears to be too dry or there's bits of flour at the bottom that's not combining because the moisture is too low, then add in about a tablespoon of milk or water and then continue to mix. And if it's too wet, sprinkle in a tablespoon or two of flour and then keep mixing until you get the right consistency. And you can see now, it's clearing the sides and it's very slightly sticking at the bottom of the bowl. And that's exactly the kind of consistency that we want. Now, just scrape it all out and have a bowl ready that's slightly oiled and then ball up the dough, add it in that bowl, roll it up with the oil and then just let it sit and rise. You want it to be at general room temperature for about one and a half to two hours. And it's actually kind of cold over here where I am, so I'm gonna just put it in the oven in the bread proof setting. So at this point, it's been about an hour and 40 minutes. And we're gonna be baking the dinner rolls in this nice casserole over here. And the oven's gonna be at 400. So you can start preheating that because after we've done forming the shapes of the actual dinner rolls, we have to rise it for another hour or so. So depending on your oven, here's your heads up. This looks awesome. And you have the scales back and just like everything else in this recipe, measure everything for consistency. We need two ounce portions of this dough for each dinner roll. This should make about 16 to 18 portions. Now I'm gonna use my bent scraper. But before that, 
Let's spray our casserole with some olive oil. Now this here, it actually has no preservatives, nothing weird that's in like something like, I think it's called canola or something. Whatever the, Pam, Pam. This is literally just olive oil. So I'm gonna take this out, put some plastic on my scale here, and then just start chopping away. Two rounds, I think, should be around this. Let's see how close that was. 66 grams, 65. So just a bit over. Let's change the unit. 2.3. I'm gonna let that pass. So, the technique. So you take that portion and you place it in your hand just like this. Cup it. Then you take it and then you roll it against like, your clean countertop and just rotate your hands so that it becomes taut on the top, on the surface, and you have a nice knot at the bottom. It's gonna give you this beautiful shape and then place that in the casserole. So here's the casserole all ready. Just spray the top with some more olive oil, keep it moist, and then just cover with plastic. And if you're wondering what I did with the rest of the dough, because that clearly is not the whole recipe, but it's right here. I made some three ounce portions for burger buns. And if you want to see how to make that, well, I'll put that up as a short, so check that out. So it's been about an hour and a half, and here's what we have. They look really good. And the oven's ready as well. Now you can see that they're kind of touching each other, and when they are gonna bake, they're gonna bake kind of together, so that when they're done, you just have fun pulling it out from the group that they're gonna be baking in as. Now before we bake it, let's make a quick egg wash. All you need for that is an egg, about a teaspoon of water. You whisk it, get it frothy, and then brush the tops with a pastry brush. Now as you're brushing the tops with your egg wash, you kinda of have to be careful of two things. You can't have a layer of egg that's too fat or too thick. It just won't be pleasant if it has too much egg. You want a thin layer on the top. And as you're brushing these balls of dough essentially, that are filled with air, you wanna make sure that you don't put too much pressure on the brush. So you have to be kinda of delicate so that you don't just ruin the work you've put in for the past two or three hours in getting them to rise so well. And now we just bake it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Bake it in the middle rack so that they bake evenly and the tops don't become too brown. Now it did take a bit longer than expected, about 25 minutes, so just keep a close eye. What you want to look for is for the top to become nice golden brown, just like this. Now clearly on this one over here, I didn't put egg wash. That's why the color is a bit different. Now once those buns have cooled down slightly, you can use a spatula or something, or even like a knife, and just help like prop those buns out, and then finish cooling on a wire rack. And you can see that these turned out absolutely perfect, and I'll show you the bottom in a second, but even the sides from the casserole got a nice, even color. Check out the bottom, no hiding here. Okay, so the buns are ready and now it's time to turn these leftover dinner rolls into the most amazing smash burger sliders. And well, you can technically bake it and have it all fresh, bake extra so that you do have leftovers on purpose. Or if you actually have leftovers, this is a great way to refresh your dinner rolls into the most amazing lunch or dinner. Now here I have lean ground beef. You can find the 80-20 mix as well, if you find that. Um, and I'm gonna keep it very simple. Everything is linked down below and portion paper squares. That's kind of important. It's gonna help you work cleaner, be organized because these burgers are gonna cook very fast. So we'll first portion out our meats in 1.5 ounce balls and then place each of them in their own individual parchment squares. Something you have to keep in mind is that you don't compress the meat too much. 
try to be as soft as you can while handling the ground beef while still forming it into a ball. And you have to work kind of fast because the warmth from your heat can actually melt the fats in the ground beef. So a couple of swift actions, toss from one hand to the other. If you want to grease your hand a bit, if you don't like the feeling of the sticky meat, do that. Even a bit of water can help as well. We're not seasoning it at this point, so quick and easy. Take it out of the package, form it into balls, place it on parchment paper squares, and then cover it with the top side. This is a great way to have your burgers actually prepared ahead of time. So I'm making six sliders. So go ahead and take your dinner rolls and very carefully cut them in half. These are gonna be your buns, of course. My cast iron here has been heating and I'm gonna add a touch of butter and then add these buns and toast them until they're golden brown. With cast iron especially, they're gonna cook very fast. So keep a close eye, flip them, lightly warm the underside and the top side of the buns as well, and then set them aside. I have some homemade spicy aioli here, and you might think that the best way to spread it is a zigzag, but actually just a dollop in the center, and then a quick swoosh with a spoon is actually the most efficient way of dressing lots and lots of sliders. I'm keeping the toppings very simple, just some pickled jalapenos and some finely sliced onions. And you might notice a mistake I'm about to make, which I didn't realize until my smash burgers were on full throttle. And you need a nice sturdy spatula so that you can really press down on it. You can even use one of those burger presses, those cast iron ones, or there are so many other kinds that you can find on Amazon. Hopefully you snagged one or got one gifted during Black Friday. It's time now to get our attention on to these smash burgers. So here's your portion, remove your parchment that was covering it and then just the ball itself, unseasoned, place it on the cast iron. Now don't remove the top parchment that's still on the sliders right now because that's gonna help protect and cover our spatula or the burger press that you'll be using to now put pressure on and completely smash and remove all these fashion papers. And now we'll go ahead and season this with salt and pepper. And I've scoured some of the internet to find out what truly makes a great smash burger. And the consensus seems to be a great crust. And to get that great crust from the pan into the burger, you need a scraper. And you know that it's time to flip once the top side, the side that you can see, is halfway pink. So once you flip them, let's add in our cheese. Now I've sliced a regular square of cheddar into thirds. These are sliders after all. And then stack one slider portion onto another. And here's the mistake I did not realize until I turned around and put that first pair of patties over my buns. I did not make enough burgers. And my wife does not have jalapenos, so I'm in a literal pickle right now. So I was like, okay, let's finish these burgers and I'll quickly whip up three more sliders. And you'll see how quick it was because it really did not take that much longer. Now secure the burgers with some wooden skewers. And before you know it, the second set of sliders without the pickled jalapenos are ready as well. They're just so amazing. And I'm telling all of you who are still here enjoying these awesome scenes, I'm gonna be making extra dinner rolls for Christmas because enjoying these sliders was just amazing. You're for sure gonna love it. This video did become kind of long, but I think it was well worth it. And I hope all of you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below and what you want to see next. What leftovers are you always stuck with in your Thanksgiving or Christmas or family get togethers? I'll see you in the next one. See ya.